Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for Avengers issue 52. And, for the most part, I enjoyed this issue, uh, mainly was related to the Cap, Captain America stuff, and the, uh, Captain Marvel stuff, Carol Danvers kind of stuff going on. Uh, Brandy, as the Starbrand child, I don't know, man, she kind of nuts. Like, I do understand what they're attempting to kind of do with her, and it really connected nicely what was going on with Cap here. And then we get, like, uh, the Black Skull and the Ghost Goblin kind of throwing stuff into effect and dealing with the Deathlocks pretty much giving us the states of why they think that, like, 616 is going to be the one that kind of, like, deals with the multiversal masters of evil kind of thing going on uh before we get to the end where we're like okay this will this will be interesting so i really liked at the beginning they uh pop up we see that cat had like talked to uh someone whose husband had died and he was from world war ii and they kind of wanted pallbearers in uniform but like most of the husband buddies had died and cap decided to do the honors for that and that was really nice. I always like when that kind of stuff goes on because it really shows Cap pretty well. So I'm like, yeah, all right. And we see that he had asked um, Carol and Brandy to pop up there. And Brandy's like, why are we even here? We didn't even know this old guy. And Carol's like, listen, uh, we don't know the old guy that died, but we do know that one, Cap. And it's like when Cap asks you to be somewhere, the answer, uh, like, yes or no are not even c considered answers it's like what time sir and that's really kind of cool to see her kind of show uh what her relationship is with captain america I'm like all right cool and then she's like i want to randy's like well i want to know when we can get out of here and we see that uh carol's like hey shouldn't you be kind of happy that you're outside of avengers mansion unless you i don't know been doing some weird stuff and we see like weeks earlier that like um, her is kind of like the crazy baby is going after some uh, uh, aliens that are on Earth. Uh, evidently, they were doing like an undercover operation to like do stuff on Earth. I was like, holy shit, fuck. And Brandy's like, I ain't fucking around with that. And it's really kind of weird because she's giving a lot of fucking toot to uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, being like, hey, yeah, I'm just protecting Earth uh, from scum and alien scum. And calling her a Kree-loving half-breed. I'm like, um... Ooh, you kind of need an attitude check. And she's like, ooh, I can, I can still handle you. But then Steve, even though uh, you know he probably knows that there's tension and stuff, he's like, great, thanks you, uh, that you could both come. Let's kind of move on and see what else is here. And he takes them to where Brandy's mother used to live. And she doesn't really know much about her family. And, of course, he then relates the story of her taking on the job, getting into the zone and everything, and all the things going on with the star brand. And he knows, well, him and the Avengers know that she's been hunting down alien insurgents and stuff like that. And she's like, gotta stop that. And the thing is, yes, the star brand kind of puts you into weapon mode. As we see that that is pretty much the attitude that's been going on with her throughout this issue. And that they want her to know who she is. And then she asks to go inside to touch something that, like, her mother held or whatnot. It's a nice kind of way to kind of... Uh, give her some balance because in the beginning of this I'm like ooh I don't really ooh, she's given a lot of sass that's gonna definitely come back to bite her if she's not careful and I don't mind a star brand baby it's just we see that like aging up kind of happens a lot because the thing is you kind of want to use that kind of new star brand as a story and I can kind of get that but you would you got to be careful when you age up because you then get those kind of bratty kind of awkward phases which is kind of what we're having here now before we see all these death blocks being like hey we kind of need to kind of we're giving you kind of warnings and stuff steve's so like ah assassins <laughs> i wasn't really trying to connect it to like dr evil kind of stuff but he's like hey death blocks they're usually assassins like we don't mean you any harm we're here for the greatest avenger of the era and saying that that is uh, actually brandy and they're like, we kind of need your help from the Death Hunters. It's like, okay, yeah, she's super strong and everything, but she kind of needs the tactics because she was like a baby when she was given this powers, and she's just been like 
freaking getting like leapfrogging age wise so she could help you she's got the power to do it but uh, if you have like a one hit punch that you can utilize but if you can't hit it hit with that punch it doesn't mean that much you can be the strongest person in the world but if you don't know how to leverage and use that strength it doesn't mean anything so then we see that the uh, ghost goblin uh, starts Pretty much dropping like ghost rider skulls everywhere it's like ah shit now steve tells brady to kind of stay there and they kind of like blew up her mom's old house and we just see throughout most of this that like norman is like talking about like himself uh captain marvel's going after him of course since we see pretty much a venomized red skull going after cap he's just like well he's like i've killed you over across all different kind of universes and I'm kind of tired of it, so I'll just kind of, like, fuck with you. And then we see that the uh, Deathlocks are pretty much, like, talking about him and all that. Steve's trying to get in contact with Avengers Mountain to kind of ascertain what's going on, potentially bringing in some kind of help or whatnot, because these could potentially be some, like, bigger kind of threats, and they might need some bigger kind of guns. Now, granted, Captain Marvel and the Starbrand would be big guns in their own rights, but the thing is, they don't know what kind of other things can be going on here. This could be an advanced kind of force. That's the kind of tactical stuff you gotta kind of think about. However, one Deathlock is being kind of like, oh no, this isn't gonna happen. This hero's days will never come again. As another Deathlock is like, look, the core, uh, core of the Avengers are still here. Captain Marvel's kind of like powering up like ain't nobody's business. We got a Phoenix. We got a Ghost Rider that's doing some crazy ass shit. We got a Namer coming out to do stuff. Jane Foster's here. And the other Deathlock who's being just like, this ain't gonna matter, man. This ain't gonna matter. Game over. Okay, never. I don't think he says game over. However, but he's very clearly gaming over aliens kind of stuff. And then, of course, Brandy's like, I ain't having this shit. And then starts flying in. He's like, yeah. Oh, guess what? I smell a child of a uh, uh, null. They're afraid of fire. And then she just fucking. I mean, look. She just comes in and is like, eat it. And it's like, Damn. Steve's like, whoa, Brandy, come the hell down. Uh, Norman's like, screw this shit. And then, of course, uh, Norman then gets, like, thunderclapped by fucking Brandy because he blew up her house. So, yes, I'm technically with her on this side because a Ghost Rider, Norman Osborn, that's, like, dropping other Ghost Rider skulls is a threat that you want to go at with the most speediest and strength up thing that you've got. I mean, shit, but we saw him pretty much bonded with Carnage. That was a fucking nightmare. An insane Ghost Rider one? I would not want to fuck around with. And then, of course, they're talking about, like, why is there a star brand in this era? It should be pretty much, like, all wiped out. And then the Black Skull's like, um, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell her that? And she's pretty much going nutso. And, of course, they need a kind of escape plan protocol. Uh, Steve's trying to pretty much tell her to stand down. He's like, I'm the star child. I got this shit. Uh, and then Carol's like, yeah, if you want to help, get one of those death blocks to safety because we need to know what the fuck's going on. I'm like, yes, yes, of course. And then, of course, we see that they're trying to get out. Uh, Norman ghosty dudes got like, I got a bag full of this that could blow up a continent in a country or two. And they're like, uh, just fucking chuck it. And Carol's like, all right, I'm going to take this grenade. But then, uh... Brandy's like, I got this shit. And she's like, I'm being my mother's child. As she, like, blasts a lot of power onto the skulls, and they pretty much are done. She was able to burn them out before they were able to do any damage. And I'm like, okay, let's kind of see what's going on. Um, and they're looking up at her, freaked out. It's like, what the hell? And, I'm like, you've never seen a little girl star brand before. It's like, uh, yeah, because you were a baby, then you are a little girl, and now you are... Uh, teen young adult? So it's like, yeah, okay. And I understand aging up characters, especially when it's like, hey, it's a baby star brand. Um, you either have to, like, hyperbolic time chamber that shit with uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z style, so that way they can, like, live out kind of normal in an expediate kind of time frame, so that way they can do shit. Or you have things like this. It always kind of, like, freaks me out, though. And it's like, all right, you were a baby. Now you're a sassy-throwing kid. Now you're, like, from a kid to an adultish, teen, strange kind of place. So 
we'll see kind of how that goes because I honestly or you have babies that are babies for an indeterminable amount of time like Luke Cage's daughter like that baby was like a baby for fucking ever however that I can kind of like deal with that a little bit better of like okay that baby's been around for a while people taking care of it this one is just like baby and then duh, 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 duh. and then uh, if you don't go into all different kind of comics you're like okay because I remember she was a baby around the whole Conchu thing going on with the Moon Knight and then it's like um she's a little kid now alright alright cool how did that kind of like pop off but we'll see and now she's like boom I am adult which should have severe mental kind of repercussions of being like I was trying to figure out how to even function as a being. Like, eating, pooping, and sleeping. Nah, uh, like... Nah, that's a big three for a kid. Like, a little baby. And then it's like, alright, now I gotta figure out words and shit. And how to, like, do battle tactics against the crazy, insane, multiversal assholes. And then you're like, alright, now I've got gotten through pu puberty like that. So we'll kind of see how that works out. Now... Uh, not that this is, like, going bad or anything, but I kind of have a more of an interest in the Strange series that'll be coming out, so that comes out in March. So I'm going to be shifting over from doing the Avengers reviews to checking out that, because I do like that premise of following Clea as the Sorcerer Supreme, as she's trying to bring back Stephen Strange. So... That kind of pulls my interest a little bit more than kind of what's going on in the Avengers comics at this point. But if you're still into the Avengers, I would definitely recommend you to kind of check it out and see kind of storyline-wise kind of where, uh, if it interests you at all. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.